In tonight's Tax Insider, congressional compensation. Tomorrow, the nonprofit and nonpartisan Taxpayers Protection Alliance will publish a full report. It suggests that U.S. lawmakers are overpaid and need to sacrifice, just like the average taxpayer. Here to break it all down for us is TPA President David Williams. Dave, let's start with some historical background. In the 1850s, lawmakers weren't even full-time employees, so how has their role evolved? Well, and that's the important part because they weren't full-time employees. They got a per diem of about six to eight dollars per day, which in today's dollars is about two hundred dollars a day. Uh, that changed in the mid 1850s, where they got a salary of about three thousand dollars, and then by World War II, they were getting about twelve thousand five hundred dollars a year as a salary, and that translates to about a hundred thousand dollars a year. So you can see that it was really World War II where they started to make uh, quite a bit of change. And some would argue that today's law stay in Washington even after leaving office whether they chose to or not rather than the old time when lawmakers would go home to their farms or their original op occupations. Absolutely, and that's part of the problem. In a lot of uh, states, you have part-time legislators, and they're only in, uh, in, in office uh, for a few months out of the year. They go home, they're lawyers, they're farmers, they're uh, auto dealers, you name it. They do a lot of different things, and I think that's, uh, you know, what we see now is members of Congress, they're taking on more responsibility. Uh, the spending bills, the individual spending bills have been around since the, the 1970s. Maybe there's too much for them to do because they don't seem to get their work done, and they're still getting paid a lot of money. According to your report, lawmakers now earn $174,000 a year, but that's before benefits. So can you paint a full picture for us? $174,000, that's the starting point. After that, we see pension benefits, uh, we see health care, we see vacation time, and it adds up $286,000 a year when you take all their benefits combined. And we're not talking about parking at the airport and some of these other perks, just in congressional pay and their compensation. Wow. Uh, the unions that represent federal workers commonly argue that those salaries can't keep up with the private sector, that they don't keep up with the private sector. Essentially, uh, that if Uncle Sam wants to attract top talent, they need to pay for it. So what about Congress in this case? How do lawmakers' salaries compare to the private sector, or is there a way to compare those? There absolutely is a way to compare this. Uh, the average worker in this country makes about $51,000. So the legislators are making 3.4 times Times more than the average salary. And if you look at someone with a master's degree, they're making about $67,000 a year. So even members of Congress are making twice as much as someone with a master's degree. So they're, they're up there when it comes to uh, uh, compared to the private sector. And how do U.S. lawmakers' salaries compare to those of lawmakers from other countries? There's only one other country where the legislators make a lot more than the average, and that's Japan. It's 3.7 times uh, more. In Spain, it's 1.4 uh, times more. So you see there's a, a wide variety, but the U.S. is the second largest disparity when you look at uh, industrial nations. So looking at the big picture here, Dave, what are you advocating for and why? Well, first of all, we're at a time of, of budget cuts. We're at a time of sequestration where members of Congress are saying we have to cut back. There's been furloughs at the Pentagon. There's been furloughs everywhere. Head Start has lost funding. So what we're saying as a member of Congress, you take the lead. You sequester your own pay uh, for a couple of years and, and cut it. And not just stop the raises because they've stopped the raises, but actually cut your pay, whether it's 5 percent, 10 percent, or the amount of sequestration. It's not going to solve our, our budget problem problems, but what it will do, it will send a clear signal that they're serious about this and that they're willing to sacrifice their own money. Should lawmakers return to part-time pay? It's really tempting for them to return to part-time work, uh, but voters can return them to part-time work every two years, so there may not be a need to do that, but it, it is tempting. David Williams, president of the Taxpayers Protection Alliance, thanks so much for your time. Thank you.